Hi folks, I'm Mr. Fullerton, and today I'd like to start our Uniform Circular Motion Unit by talking about centripetal acceleration. Our goals are going to be to list the conditions required for Uniform Circular Motion, or UCM. We'll explain the acceleration of an object moving in a circle at constant speed. And finally, solving problems that involve calculations of centripetal acceleration. So let's dive right in. Uniform Circular Motion requires two things constant speed for an object moving in a circular path. Pretty straightforward conditions for uniform constant speed circular motion. Now, is an object undergoing uniform circular motion accelerating? That's a bit of a tricky question. If an object's moving in a circle, even if its speed is constant, its velocity must be changing. Why? because velocity is a vector. It has a direction. Remember, velocity is a vector. Even if it's moving at a constant speed, as long as its direction ch is changing, its velocity is changing. And acceleration, if you recall, is the rate of change of velocity. Therefore, if velocity is changing, the object must be accelerating. If you drive your car in a big loop, a circular path, staying at 60 miles per hour the entire time, you are, by physics definitions, accelerating. Now the direction of your centripetal acceleration, or acceleration as you move in a circle, which we're going to abbreviate AC, can be found by looking at the definition of acceleration. Let's take a look here. If we start off with an initial velocity up as we go around the circle, and a moment later we are at a different point on the circle, so moving in a different direction, we have an initial and a final velocity. Our acceleration is going to be related to the change in velocity, delta v, which is always the final value minus the initial value. Well, we could rewrite that to say that that is final plus the opposite of the initial. Now when we look over here at our vectors, if I draw VF as it currently stands, something like that, and then I draw opposite of VI, if VI points up, opposite of VI must point down, then what I get for my resultant going from the starting point of the first to the ending point of the last points in this direction right here. If I were to draw that same vector between our two starting points, I would get a vector pointing right toward the center of the circle. So the direction of the acceleration for an object moving in a circle is always toward the center of the circle. In fact, centripetal, in the term centripetal acceleration, means center-seeking, always pointing toward the center of the circle. You may have heard the term centripetal force. A centripetal force is a force that causes a centripetal acceleration. So it points toward the center of the circle. And if you've heard the term centrifugal force, we'll try and avoid that in here. Usually that is a misused term. When in fact centrifugal acceleration relates to different uh, frames of reference as objects move in a circle and is very often misused. So let's avoid the term centrifugal altogether. Centripetal is the one we want, meaning center-seeking, toward the center of the circle. Now, the magnitude of the, of the centripetal acceleration can be found from a fairly straightforward formula. The centripetal acceleration is equal to the square of the object's velocity divided by the radius of the circle it's turning. Let's take a look and see if we can't apply this. Number one, if a car is accelerating, is its speed increasing? Hmm, that's a tricky question. It depends. A car can have an increasing speed as it's accelerating. Think of going down the highway and you hit the accelerator on your car. You'll probably speed up. That's an acceleration where you are speeding up. On the other hand, if you were in your car going down the highway and you hit the brakes, you would be accelerating. Your velocity would be changing, but your speed would be becoming less. 
or in the case of uniform circular motion, as you move in a circle, at a constant speed you are accelerating because your direction is changing and you're always accelerating toward the center of that circle. So a couple different, different scenarios where this could be true or false depending on the situation. Question two, in the diagram below, a cart travels clockwise at constant speed in a horizontal circle. So it, this is a horizontal circle, we must be looking at it from the top down. At the position shown in the diagram, which arrow indicates the direction of the centripetal acceleration? Now to answer this, all we have to remember is centripetal acceleration always points toward the center of the circle. Therefore, our answer must be 1A, toward the center of the circle. Question three. Now we're showing the top of a 65 kilogram student at point A on an amusement park ride. So we're looking down. The ride spins the student in a horizontal circle of radius 2.5 meters at a constant speed of 8.6 meters per second. The floor is lowered and the student remains against the wall without falling to the floor. Which vector best represents the direction of the centripetal acceleration of the student at point A? Well, there's a great analysis we can do with these types of problems, but we don't have to go very deep here. If we want to know the direction of the centripetal acceleration, remember again, centripetal just means center seeking, toward the center of the circle. So without any further thought, we can right away choose the answer 1, because at position A, toward the center of the circle, lines up with the arrow under choice 1. Question four, which graph best represents the relationship between the magnitude of the centripetal acceleration and the speed of an object moving in a circle of constant radius? So we're trying to relate centripetal acceleration and the speed of an object. Well, our formula, if you recall, AC equals V squared over R. So our speed, V, is a square relationship. Therefore, we should see a big change in AC with little changes in V squared. A square, square law relationship looks like number two. One last question. A half kilogram object moves in a horizontal circular path with the radius 0.25 meter at a constant speed of four meters per second. Find the object, the magnitude of the object's acceleration. Well, we know mass is 0 0.50 kilograms. We know the radius is 0 0.25 meters. And the speed is 4 meters per second. We're looking for the magnitude of the object's acceleration. And if it's moving in a circle, it must be a centripetal acceleration. Therefore, we can use AC equals V squared over R, which is going to be 4 meters per second squared divided by our radius 0 0.25 meters that's 16 meters squared per second squared over 0 0.25 meters or 64 meters per second squared so a nice short introduction to centripetal acceleration and we'll follow up with some more units as we go deeper and deeper into the study of uniform circular motion. Thanks for your time and have a terrific day.